Hello, welcome back to Prophetic Diary. I just want to say hello to all my first time visitors. Welcome back to my subscribers and thank you to all my faithful givers. I just want to give my givers a shout out. It means a lot um, when you give because I am able to give back. Um, I do so into a lot of ministries myself here on YouTube. So um, it's just nice to keep that cycle and that flowing going in the um, kingdom. I um, also want to thank those who um, take that extra second and minute out in um, the comments to encourage our fellow brothers and sisters. Um, we we all need encouragement here and there. So just stopping and liking their comment or encouraging them, um, to encouraging each other is just really important. Um, I even had someone defend me in the comments. And, you know, I... I, I just because you're a believer does mean that you have to let people push over you. Um, you know, it's it's a way to handle everything. And I appreciate that because it is a way to let someone know that I'm not a pushover just because I'm a Christian. I am a godly woman, but I am a fearless woman as well. Um, so I appreciate that. And um I just want to get into this wonderful word that the Lord has. It's so much and it's so filling. And I even said to God, I said, God, you sure this isn't the November word? Because it's meaty, it's heavy, it's filling. And he said, nope, it's not the November word. It's the right now word. So <laughs> let's just get into it. Father God, I thank you so much for this opportunity to come before my brothers and my sisters, Father God. I come before you in thanksgiving, Father God, thanksgiving for this word, thanksgiving for all, Father God, that you have done up to this point, Father God, all that you're planning to do in our lives, Father God. I pray, Father God, that you'll touch every individual that's listening in on this video, Father God. You brought them here, Father God, for a word, Jesus, from you, from the heavens. So I thank you for your presence as I decrease, Father God, and you increase, Father God. We thank you. We honor you. We love you, Father God. We reverence you, Father God. We are here for you to fill us up, Father God. Not our will, but your will be done in our lives, Father God. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. So I'm going to start out by reading the word and then I'll get into what, what we he has for us. And the word is going to be coming from Psalms 126, 5 and 6. And then I'm just going to read into 127. Um, I don't have that on the screen, but I do really want you guys to go on your own and read Psalms 127. But we're going to start in 126. It reads, those who sow in tears will reap with songs of joys. He who gives out weeping, carrying seed to sow will return with songs of joy, carrying shafts with him. Verse um, Psalms 127. Unless the Lord builds the house, its building is in vain. Unless the Lord watches over the city, the watchmen stand guard in vain. In vain, you rise early and step and stay up late, toiling for food to eat. For he grants sleep to those he loves. And I'm going to stop there. <laughs> and... um. The Lord wants me to let you know that your sowing was not in vain and that blessings are going to start entering in your life now. You're going to see it. You're going to see every seed that you sowed on rocky ground, every seed that you sowed on sharp throne, th thorns, every seed that you sowed in stubborn soil afflicted soil, sickness, family issues, pain. You sold when you were fatigued. You sold when you were in sorrow. You sold when it was raining outside. You sold when you were in fear. You sold when you were in danger. You sold when you were in poverty. You showed, sold when you were in want. You sold when you were in lack. The Lord says, I saw your sacrifice and you sold when others laughed at you and when they said, what is she over there sowing those seeds for? She been in that field all day sowing those seeds and we still ain't seen nothing grow yet. You sold on that job when they had that whip, whip on your back and they were picking at you for no reason. 
falsifying things, abusing your reputation, you still sold. You sold when it didn't make sense to you. You sold. You got up every day and chose to read your word. You got up every day and chose to put on a sermon. You seek after pastors and preachers and prophets and, and whoever can help you get closer to the Lord. You did that through the Lord's strength. You got up every day seeking first the kingdom of God. The Lord saw that. It's been a long road. It's been a long journey, but you did it. You may have dirt all over your face and you have may have dirt under your fingernails from all the sewing that you did and the toiling that you did. You may have tears, dried up tears that have streamed down your face. You may have lost weight. You may have lost hair. Oh, I know all about it. I have been through it. I know all about it. I've been there. We have sown, we have sacrificed, we have been laughing stocks of mockery. They're saying, you're so anointed, you're so uh, a child of God, then why don't you have this? Why are your clothes raggedy? Why are your shoes raggedy? Why don't your children have? Why don't you live in the best neighborhood? I know this is what people are saying to you guys. Why are you so thirsty? If your God is, your, why are you, the living water, why are you so thirsty? Oh, I know all about it. You're, you're around people that don't understand you. Around spirits that just attack you. Jealousy spirits, manipulating spirits, cunning spirits, thieving spirits just want to take all your goodness out of you. Still all your good energy, still your positivity, all your jewels, all your knowledge, all your wisdom, all your anointing, and then just go and, and, and throw you to the side. Oh, I know all about it. I know about the afflictions when you're going back and forth with the Lord and trying to figure out, God, I'm about to lose my mind. The mental, the mental battles where you feel like you're literally about to lose it because you can't believe that your world has crashed and crumbled or that that loved one has passed away or that that loved one has walked out on you and the kids or that that loved one left you for somebody else. I know all about it. What about sickness and disease? What about the people that were diagnosed with diseases, the people that have back pain and headaches and migraines? What about the fatigue when you could barely get on your knees to pray to God? You got to lay on your back and worship him. What about the sorrow of the loss of family members that turned their back on you? What about the sorrow? What about the weeping you have for other people that are lost or turned their back on God? What about the family issues where you're finding out that this, this man isn't your father or you're finding out that your family been gossiping about you or your family kicked you out of the family. What about it? The sharp thorns, thorns that you sowed on. People stabbing you in your back, but you still sowing seeds, believing in the Lord. But you never question the Lord. You never ask them, when are you going to save me out? When are you going to pull me out of this, God? But I came to you to tell you that every single last seed that you sown, the Lord says that it was not in vain. The rain has come and the harvest has grown. While where you were seeking me, your harvest was growing. Your harvest was budding. It was growing on those rocky grounds. It was growing. There's nothing that can stop the seed of the Lord. There's nothing. This, this harvest is coming from heaven. What can stop? It from growing. It doesn't matter what the ground looks like. It can grow because of the Lord's hand, because of the Lord's um, possibilities. What's impossible with man is possible with God. It can grow. There's nothing that can stop it from growing. The Lord keeps your seed from harm. He will watch over it. He watch over it. And we know what it says in Psalms 121. And in verse seven, the Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and your going both now and forevermore. The Lord watches over the things that concern you. 
the Lord watch is over it. And he came for me to tell you today that your blessings are here. Your harvest is here. This is everyone saying, oh, I just want this year to be over. No. And that's why I, I that's why I want to encourage you that you don't have to be in time. You don't have to be on man's calendar. But if you get outside of that, it doesn't matter what year it is, what time it is, what day it is, what hour it is. The Lord blessing has arrived. He can bless you in any season, in any month. He, it doesn't matter with him. The Lord's harvest is here. It is raining and you're about to start to see it. You're about to start to see these blessings. Your thirst will be quenched. He will give unto you so much that you'll be able to give unto others. He's going to fill you up. He's going to bring comfort into your life. He's going to put a new confidence in you that when you walk past the mirror, you're not even going to recognize who you, who you are. It is repayment time for all those people that put you down and all those, um, all your finances that was held, was held up or taken or were, what you restitution for what you should have been paid and they didn't pay you. All of that is coming back. Financial blessings are about to start to flow in from multiple streams of income. You're going to have multiple streams of income. Make sure you got your zeal, your cash app, everything prepared so that it, the, your money can get to you. Open up that bank account because it's about to overflow with the Lord, the loves and hair, the Lord's inheritance, your harvest that you planted, that he gave you the strength to plant. You're about to have an all new everything, a completely new life. Hear my voice. And this may not be for everybody, but I know this word is for somebody. You're about to have a new life, new friends, new, new husband, new relationship, new ideas, new everything. If you're waiting to have a child, you're going to have a newborn baby. You're going to have a new walk. People are not going to recognize you. They're not going to know your walk, your covenant, your hair is going to start to grow again. Okay, this is no joke. You're not going to recognize yourself in the mirror. It's going to be like these things never happen to you. A new confidence. You're going to speak with confidence. When people ask you questions, you're going to know what you're talking about because of the teachings and the knowledge and the wisdom that the Lord has given you on the other side of the mountain that is given you in your wilderness. You're going to use all those things that you were um, learning while you were waiting for your harvest to come in. OK, and then he gave me the word richness, the word richness. And when you think of richness, you think of grains, you think of um, wholeness of the grain. And, you know, I, I went and actually looked up the definition of it. And I hope you guys are following me because this word is very rich um, and, it, and it, it, it's, it's filled with the quality of life that the Lord is trying to give us. And I looked up the definition of richness. And it says containing plentiful qualities of something desirable. OK, quality of being pleasing. Deep and strong. We're going to eat on this new life and it's going to be filling. It's going to be rich. It's going to make us stronger. It's going to be a nourishment to our bodies. It's going to be a nourishment to others. We'll have so much strength from from the newness and from the nourishment and the plentifulness that the Lord has given us that we'll have more than enough to give to others. Our ministries are going to be booming and strong because we're going to be filled and overflowing and outpouring. And we'll be able to give in to others without looking over our shoulder and going back to our account to make sure that we had enough to give that. You'll be able to give without reluctant. OK, and 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 one another thing the Lord shared with me um, was that. You're going to laugh again, you're going to laugh again. Um, you, you, some of us choose to laugh a lot. We used to have to have friends that, you know, brought joy to our life and people and things that brought excitement to our life. And, and that laughter and joy was overtaken by worry. But the Lord is bringing back your laughter. He's bringing your children back home. He's meeting your needs. And, and he showed me where you're going to have more than enough. Uh, I mean, you're going to have an overflow. So he showed me where some of us like are going to pour a cup. Let's say it's a cup of milk and you only fill it like halfway. He said you're going to be drinking it. And then you're going to be like, I thought I only poured a half a cup, but there's 
seem like I poured a whole cup because there's more than enough. So you're going to be drinking and you're going to be moving and you're going to have more than enough. You're, you're going to, um, there's going to be like a, a stretching going on, like the woman who began to fill the pots up and there was more than enough oil and it was just overflowing and over and overflowing. He's going to take that little and he's going to make it much. Okay, I hope that you guys are following me. Marriage will happen fast. It will fall right into place when, when you meet your spouse, when you and your spouse finally meet each other or come together, if you already know who they are, or when you reconciliate that marriage or that break or that divorce, whatever the Lord has for you, it's going to happen fast. And it'll be like you guys knew each other for years. It's going to be so filling. It's going to be so joyful. Because the Lord has been working on your spouse and working it on you. You've been in one hospital. They've been in another hospital, but you both have been healing. So when you come together, you're just going to grab each other's hands or run off into the sunset and sunset and do what the Lord has called you to do. Because your hearts will be one and they will match and they will be purposeful and they'll be tired of the world and they'll be over the world and they'll be ready to take on what the Lord has for you. And I apologize if this video is long. There's going to be an abundance in your home. People will love to come over and fellowship with you. And he says that a sign, and you'll notice that this is taking place. The enemy will become very upset with you. There's going to be a lot of jealous spirits arising around you, but they won't be able to touch you. Their words won't be able to hurt you like they used to. You're not even going to hear them. You're actually going to pray for them. So this is the word of the Lord. It was very, it, it's a lot, but it's his promises. They're going to start to show up and materialize in your life. Cast away that old garment, cast away that old way of thinking, open up your eyes. The Lord says, I'm doing a new thing. Should you not perceive it? Open up your eyes, start looking around because these blessings are flowing in. They're coming in and the Lord is ready to give them to you. It's harvest time. No more mourning and crying. And I'm not saying the road is going to be easy from here, but it's going to be much easier with your blessings in your hand and the power in your hand and authority in your hand and more finances in your hand and, and more, oh, you know, oh, yeah. And his, your reputation is going to take you very far. Favor is going to take you even further in that anointing. I mean, what can stop the anointing? Not a thing. So these are these are the blessings that's about to start to materialize in your life. I, I want to hear the testimonies. I love reading you guys emails. Even if I can't respond to them all, I love reading them. So I pray that you guys have a blessed day. I pray that this word has blessed you and let the Lord continue to fill up your cup. Have a wonderful day. Amen.